All right, welcome back to the Level Up Podcast. I'm your co-host, Brendan Payne, and today we're going to talk about uh, protecting your profits while you're increasing your production. Basically, how are you going to keep the money that you're making? You know, I think most agents that have a consistent schedule right now are probably making money. And honestly, in a lot of cases, they're probably making more money than they ever have in this business. Of course, we're paid off commission. And the commission is based on the sales price, which in most markets has gone through the roof. So it's a great thing. Throw in the fact that hopefully you're growing the amount of transactions that you do each year. And it's a huge opportunity for financial growth. The question is, what are you growing? So in today's episode, Greg and I are going to talk about how you can avoid the pitfalls that really, really productive agents face when they're growing their business. We're also going to give you some ideas on how to set up your business so you can be positioned for profit throughout your career. Enjoy this episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Level Up podcast. Of course, I'm Greg Harrelson, um, and I've got my co-host, Brendan Payne, with me. And we're going to have another great conversation. Uh, today, we're going to take it a little different in a different direction. We're going to talk about profits. And that seems to be something that a lot of times uh, is not discussed in the real estate industry. So before we get started, Brendan, thank you for uh, joining me again. Yeah, I'm excited to, uh, to go through this one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Profits. Well, first of all, we like profits, um, you and I. And um, but we want to you, you brought up an interesting conversation, um, you know, uh, before we got onto the podcast, and you talked about um, protecting profits um, as your production is increasing. Mm-hmm. And man, we could go in a lot of directions with that topic. But w- what's on your mind? I, I mean, I, I'm just intrigued by that. Protecting profits while you're increasing your production. Yeah, and, and there, you know, there's so many different directions we could go. And I want to try to stay s- somewhat um, focused in in stuff that. You know, the agents, this is level up agent entrepreneur. So yes. our goal is, you know, we're in front of people that might be brand new in the business in some sort of increase in their business, or they might actually be beyond what they started doing as an agent and they're building other businesses and things like that. And in, in all of those cases, the goal is to end up with something at the end, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that's the profit. At the end of the deal, you want to have some profit. At the end of the career, you want to have a lot of profit and maybe some things that are going to be paying back. So that's what kind of got me thinking about the topic. And it's, you know, right now in a market like this, it's, um, I think there's two categories of agents. You probably have agents that are brand new and they're, they're just ramping up their business and maybe they don't have consistent income. So they're in that category of like, they're in build mode, trying to figure it out. Um, then you've got the category of agents that probably are making some money. And for the most part, we're just going to use those two categories. And that category is probably a lot of people that are making more money now than they have in their Mm -hmm. career, because obviously there's a lot of transactions. And if nothing else, if you did 25 deals in your market in 2020 and you did 25 deals in 2022, you got a heck of a raise. Did the same amount of production, but there's a price increase and we're paid off commission that's based off the price, of course. So there's probably a good chance that you're making some more money. So I wanted to kind of just cover a a couple stages that as an agent that you usually go through and then get your thoughts on, you know, within those, once we get past the first couple of them, that's where the danger zone is. So the first stage is like, you know, when, you, when you're when you a new licensee or you just come over into the industry, you either have a goal in mind that like, I could go do this and make X amount of money, or I'm going to get into real estate and make that money and more. So you've got that goal, or you left another job, left another career, and you've got a replacement. So I left this career yeah. and I've got to get quickly in the next year to what I made last year, because I don't want to make, nobody makes a move to go backwards economically, so, or financially. So you've got those goals in mind. You're going to hustle and you're going to run and you're going to hit that goal. You're going to be on pace to actually make the money that you knew you had to make in the beginning was your goal or to replace what you had. We'll call that stabilization where you actually hit that level of income production where you know, okay, I'm not going to go out of business. I actually can do this. I can create recurring income, replace what I was doing before. This is going to work. Then you keep hustling 
and your skills and everything you've done in the past kicks in. We've talked about that a lot. That's where that compound effect starts kicking in. And now you're, re you're replaced your income and you've got a little bit left over. Now, in that scenario, that little bit left over, there's usually a little bit of an increase in lifestyle there. That's when somebody goes, you know what, I'm paying all my bills. I like to live a little bit different. Maybe I'm going to nicer restaurants. Maybe I'm taking an extra couple, you know, two, three day vacations through the year, things that I couldn't do before. And you've got that little bit extra. Then you keep moving forward. And now you've got extra beyond that. So it's like, okay, maybe I need to pay some of these bills off. I got, that got my attention. I got to do, have a little fun. Now I'm going to try to start chipping away at some of these bills. Then it's like, where do you go from that point? Because as you continue to grow your production, you continue to grow your profit, then you have all these opportunities of this extra income and extra profit you really have to be clear on where you go and what you do with it. Because otherwise, if you keep maintaining each one of those little jumps in income and go, you know what? I want to start doing this. I want to start doing this. And it's all an increase in lifestyle. Eventually, you're going to look back. And at one point, you were making $25,000, $30,000 a year and going, man, I, I mean, I'm, I'm living and it's okay. It's no, no big deal. I get to enjoy myself. And then all of a sudden, you might be making $300,000 and you don't have anything else to show for it. And so that is, that's what we want to avoid. Yeah. Right? That's, that's, that's the goal. So give me, give me your, give me your thoughts on that. I'm going to. Yeah. Let you, the, you, the, the first, there. yeah, there, there's a lot there. The first thing I wrote down here, as you were talking, I was like, you know, we need to earn like it's a hot market and we need to spend like it's a cold market. Mm. You know, it's just a thought. It's like, you know, because, you know, unfortunately, and, and we see this all the time in all walks of life where somebody earns more and then their standard of list living or their cost of living kind of increases. And a lot of times the cost of living increases more than the, the additional profits that are being earned. And, and a lot and why, of that, go ahead. Not to interrupt you. Why do you think that that happens? Because this is, I, I, you're so spot on and it's so industry it's so dangerous in this industry why do you think that is uh, you know well two things N number one i think i i think that people feel i, I think they're trying to create a, a different a new identity for themselves and so what they're doing is they're like okay if i can show you know i'm, I'm having some success i want to show everybody that success and I, I think we start to, to over purchase things because of the image that it creates for ourselves. Mm. That's how I feel it is. Okay. And then the fact that you can leverage and get money through banks to buy these things, it doesn't feel like you're spending like, like if I'm going to buy a new car and it's going to be a really, really a luxury car, maybe I only have to spend you know, a portion of just a little bit of my money to get something that elevates my image to a whole nother level. Mm. And so when I'm spending it, like if I have to put my down payment, it's like, I'm only feeling like I'm spending that amount down. And for that amount down, it's kind of like a cash on cash return. Mm -hmm. I put this much cash in, but I get this much return when it comes to my image. And I think that's very attractive. And I think we logic ourselves into doing that thinking that, well, that image is, is going to help me make more money. And the reality is it doesn't. It never does. Look, wow. I can afford, I, I just, I, hopefully everyone takes this the right way. I can afford an expensive car and I drive a GMC Sierra. I do not give a darn. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I have the opposite image. Now, when I have that, yeah, I sure do end up saving a lot of money. Yeah. But if I want to build that big image, it's going to co cost me a lot of money. And for some reason, you know, we hear about keeping up with the Joneses, right? That old saying, man, in real estate, it's that way because everyone's putting it on the social media as to what they're buying. And as soon as like you see all these agents are doing it, 
then there's that one person that now is just coming into money. That one agent's like, well, maybe that's what I need to do. Yeah. The only people watching those social media posts are other agents. <laughs> it's not the consumer. So you, they're all thinking they're creating this image. It's an image to impress other agents. Like, hey, I'm more successful than you. Yeah. And the consumer doesn't even see it at all. So that's my thought. Yeah. No, I love both of those. The one that I was going to, the, the one that always gets me is the lag time in this industry. And so meaning when I was anybody, most people, if you're in any type of job, I was in a corporate world, I put in two weeks of work and the next week I got paid for the two weeks prior. And then the next time, the next payroll cycle, I got paid. There was no lag time. It was like a week. And in this business, we go to work today and likely best case scenario, best case scenario, we find somebody right now today that wants to go do something. We go show them property. We go list their property in probably 30 days is about as quick as you're going to get paid for work that you actually did today that pays off in 30 days. But that's not the majority of our business. The majority of our business happens today. We go and do work. We find the lead. We nurture the lead. We get the listing, blah, blah, blah. All this stuff happens. And then at some point in the future, six, eight weeks, three months, three years down the road, we actually get paid for the work that we did sometime in the past. But what happens with all of the stuff that's going through our head? Well, we get all these deals from work we did pack back here. Then we get these pendings and then we go, oh man, am I good? And then we go spend and then we go do all these things. And then all of a sudden we realize, oh my God, there's just 90 days that I didn't do what I was supposed to do. When's that show up? Those 90 days? Nope. It shows up for the next six months going forward. So that lag time is something that's fascinated me about this business. I actually think it's one of the things that's driven me to be consistent uh, because I'm scared to death of that. Like I'm scared to death of at some point I could stop doing stuff and I'm never even going to know that I stopped doing it until at some random time in the future when it's going to be like, damn, it's dead around here because I didn't do yeah, anything six months there's ago. There's no pipeline. Yeah, yeah, you know, Kevin Mills is always, uh, it always sticks in my head. And, he, and he, every time he says it, I, I just love it. And he says, he always feels he's 60 days from being out of business. Yeah. You know, it's just like, because he knows if he stops right now in 60 days, everything will come out the pipeline and yeah. he's like completely out of business, right? Yeah. And, and um, so I, I think that's a good thing to, to say. The other thing is before we, you know, uh, drop off here is if you're out there experiencing uh, an increase, a quantum leap, a, a jump in your business, my recommendation to you is, and this is, takes discipline, wait 12 months before you start adding on and buying a bunch of stuff. Like allow yourself 12 months of financial growth and while maintaining your current level of uh, cost of living. Give yourself 12 months. So if you're getting really go, going through a lot of growth and you can feel it, wow, I'm really making more money, then say, I'm gonna go 12 months before I change anything in terms of my standard or, or, or the cost of living allow yourself that 12 months to go to the bank. Now, here's what's going to happen. What's going to happen is you're going to get used to saving a lot of money. And when you get used to saving a lot of money, that becomes a habit. It becomes harder to spend that money. But if you actually see an increase in your business and you start spending money immediately, then guess what? You don't get used to saving money. You don't get used to having your account um, balances go up. You get used to just money comes in, money guns out, and that becomes the habit. So in order to form the right habit, as soon as you're going through that leap, that quantum leap, you're leveling up in income, put a 12-month moratorium on it, that you are going to keep the same standard of living. Now, after 12 months, if you're like, ooh, I hate this saving money. Ooh, I don't like my account balances being so high. And you want to go blow it? Go blow it. But my hunch is 
is that you'll be more responsible because you actually see it building and that becomes a little bit more desirable than creating those other images. Yeah, I love that. And I think you'll be, if you go blow it, you're probably going to blow it on things that actually have a chance to make you money. So yeah, it, I bet. it's yeah. it's interesting. Like if you had a hundred thousand dollars extra over 12 months, um, throwing away or just using on stuff that really at the end of the year, you don't even, you know, lifestyle type things that we're talking about over the course of 12 months, that hundred thousand can go pretty quick. And at the end of the year, be like, wow, that's, I don't, I don't really have anything to show for it. If the hundred thousand yeah. is in the bank at the end of 12 months, then you sit there and go a hundred thousand dollars. If I put 20% down, I could buy a lot of properties right now or I could go invest in this, or I could go and actually see this money is going to work for me versus a few thousand here, an extra trip there, crazy trip here. And trust us, we like to play, oh, yeah. but it wasn't until that part was, was in place um, that we, that it, you know, a lot of that stuff opened up. It wasn't a, it wasn't all the way along, you know, just going, let's go crazy because, um, we knew that it had to have some effect, not just, you know, the good time for now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's a great conversation, a great conversation, especially for the Level Up podcast, Yeah. Uh, you know, just to make sure that we're all, um, you know, truly reaping the benefits of what we're creating for ourselves. You know, if, if the money comes in uh, one hand and goes out the other real quick, we never know what it's really like to create wealth. That's why I say, get it, keep it for a while. It'll be much harder to let it go when you've had it for a year than when you've had it for a day. Yep. That's what's important. Well, good. Well, cool. thank you everybody for, for, for listening. Of course, I want to make sure you, um, you like, I keep reminding you, we have a coaching program called Agent Success Academy. So please look it up. It's at the bottom of the podcast. Um, it's also, if you're seeing this on YouTube, it's in the description of the YouTube. There's a link. I would love for you to join us. And then Brendan and I, with two other guys, we created a, a, a pretty cool uh, a course called Objection Handling Mastery Course. And the uh, reviews on that course are, are, are very, very high, where we, we go in and handle some of the, uh, the objections that we're all getting. We handle it in different ways. And we even break down like what our thoughts were um, and why we handled it the way we handled it. So I'd love for you to, to, uh, to participate in any of those programs. You know, Brendan, thanks again for always uh, being here with me. And um, we'll talk to you all later. Sounds good. See you guys.